Not long after the Civil War, a handful of families formed what would become the oldest Jewish congregation in the city. 150 years later, Atlanta looks back at the history of the temple. By the early 20th century, the temple's place in the city of Atlanta seemed secure. Under Rabbi David Marks, the growing congregation moved into a larger building and had come to include prominent members of the civic and business communities. But in 1913, a tragedy involving a temple member would shatter that sense of security, not only for the congregation, but for Jews throughout the South. In 1913, on Confederate Memorial Day, a little girl by the name of Mary Fagan came to Atlanta to go to the parade. Um, she also was a, a, one of the little girls that worked at the pencil factory. She goes to collect her pay from Leo Frank, who is the superintendent. He happened to be working that Saturday, and he was the last person to admit to seeing her alive. Originally from Brooklyn, Leo Frank had come to Atlanta to work for the National Pencil Company, then located on Forsyth Street in downtown. Leo Frank was active in the Jewish community. He was an active member of this congregation, involved in the temple. Uh, he and his wife, Lucille, and uh, was accused of, of murdering uh, a young woman who worked in that factory, Mary Fagan. But then a new suspect emerged. Somebody saw another person who worked at the pencil factory, the sweeper, Jim Conley, washing out a shirt. It looked like it had blood on it. The police arrested Jim Conley, and that's when they first heard the tale that he would tell throughout the next couple of years and through the trial, and that was that Leo Frank um, killed Mary Fagan, and, and that Jim Conley then helped Leo Frank move her body down to the basement. Despite inconsistencies in Conley's story, he became the prosecution's primary witness. And while a number of historians now view Conley as the likely killer, the jury voted to convict Leo Frank. But after an exhaustive review of the case, Governor John Slayton commuted his death sentence to life in prison. Spurred on by public outrage and an inflammatory press, a group known as the Knights of Mary Fagan took matters into their own hands. They kidnapped Leo Frank from the state prison in Milledgeville, drove more than 100 miles to Mary Fagan's hometown of Marietta, and lynched him. Such a terrible incident of uh, someone being plucked out of a jail and then hung on a tree. It seems like it should only be in a movie, but here in Atlanta, it's not a movie, it's real life. It really happened. And I think that uh, it made people always question the people around them. A lot of people left town. It was unpleasant for Jewish people even to be riding on the streetcars or, or walking on the streets because they could hear these terrible things being said about Jews. Stores were boycotted, especially in Marietta. There were boycott notices all over town saying, don't go to Jewish businesses. So it was a very, very difficult time. The entire ordeal, from Mary Fagan's murder to Leo Frank's, spanned just a little over two years. But the Jewish community would feel the aftershocks for decades. People who are descendant of the Frank family will still tell you that they were, they were absolutely not able to even talk about it. There were college students in our congregation who didn't even know that who Leo Frank was or that he was a part of our congregation. Well, sure, I knew. Lucille Frank, but nobody ever said what had happened to her husband. She was a nice middle-aged lady. The community had the attitude that if you didn't talk about it, maybe it'll go away. It changed the Jewish community. It changed how they felt about themselves. Members of the temple went underground. They stopped running for political office. They kept a low profile because this has shattered their sense of self to their core. It, it was just a total shock. It was, it was like, all of a sudden finding out that you're not who you think you are. In fact, that's exactly what happened. Uh, they were not the comfortable, uh, equal citizens that they had thought they were. 
It would only be after another disaster, one with a very different outcome, that the Atlanta Jewish community would begin to heal. For more on the history of the temple, visit pba.org slash temple.